Hello and welcome to another edition of On The Whistle in an eerily quiet stadium of light but to be honest that feels quite fitting because that was one of the flattest afternoons I think we've had here for a while and there was absolutely no way I was going to sit by myself and talk through that nil-nil draw with QPR so I've convinced my good friend Nick Barnes who you'll all know from Netflix, BBC Radio and all of the things to come along and chat through it. First of all, Barnsley, what did you make of that? Um... Well, it wasn't scintillating by any stretch of the imagination and I sort of was pleading them not to go and throw it away at the end. Mm. I thought, you know, you, you've got close to keeping a clean sheet. Always felt a little bit, it was probably too much to ask them to score. I just thought there just wasn't enough in the final third. I think that they might have snatched victory, but I was fearful that they might lose the game. Um, and they have to thank Anthony Patterson really for several good saves yeah. that kept them kept them very much in the game but overall um i i didn't think there was much direction in the first half i thought they were they looked um disconnected but didn't didn't there wasn't any rhythm really to to the play um Hamir up front didn't really work for me the one the one moment he actually did impose himself on the game when he tackled steve cook and left him on the floor and should have been 20 yards away, he, he, yes. he just stopped, stalled, and then I don't, didn't, couldn't comprehend that really. I think they got better in the second half, but just all, all, overall, you know, the announcements made of 41,000. There was nowhere near 41,000 yeah. in the stadium. There were a lot of empty seats. It was a sort of underwhelming afternoon, but at the same time, it has, um, you know, they they have stopped that run of defeats. They they put themselves into a position where now. As I said to Mike Dodds in the post-match press conference, it's a bit of a circuit breaker now. They've, yeah. they've halted a poor run, they've kept a clean sheet, they've got a two-week break. They will get players back for Cardiff and then hopefully yeah, I think the, the last few games. The, the one tiny, tiny positive you can take from the game is that that sense of absolute panic we've had over the last couple of weeks, they've at least a little bit put a stop to that just because when you look at the table now, the teams who were sort of having a little revival have tailed off again. They've probably already got enough points or probably one win away. So when you factor in that you will get four or five games out of Robertson Clark, you can see that it's going to be OK in terms of staying up. But again, what today showed was just how staggeringly alarming the drop-off, especially going forward. Yeah. No shots on target. That would have been inconceivable under Tony Mowbray or last season. Or and you know, Obviously, the injuries are a, a big part of that. But again, today, I really thought he was going to go with Job up front. I, I did as well. I, I, just I, thought, did, yeah. I just thought... You know, he's probably been the best of the options this season. I thought it was the obvious kind of solution. Um, I understand, I kind of respect that he wants to give him here opportunities, but, and, it, and it's difficult because you don't want to judge someone in their first season of senior football too harshly. Huge change for him in terms of coming to Sunderland, but at the moment, the drop-off from those top attacking players is just too severe, isn't it? It's just whole, at the moment, it's this whole, what has happened to the football club this year. Yeah. You know, it's all happened, it's all stemmed from Tony Mowbray's dismissal. But the drop off, they, they, they've dropped off a cliff in all sorts of aspects. You know, they, for the first time, um, I've just been chatting to Dan Neal about this actually, that if you think about it, this is the first time in probably six years the Sunderland are have, going to have nothing yeah. to play for at the end of the season. And it's totally uncharted territory. You can probably argue it's more than six years because they had relegation from the Championship yeah. as well as relegation yeah. from the Premier League. And in those seasons leading up to relegation from the Premier League, they're always fighting to the end of the season to stay in the Premier League. So suddenly, Sunderland is they, they've plateaued, and they, especially they, they, you know, and that's yeah. I think people are finding that quite difficult to come to. And, and I think last season, even though they did eventually get in the playoffs, it looked for a while like they weren't going to. Yeah, but we well, were kind of okay with that because the football was still fantastic to yeah. watch, and that made a huge difference. And obviously, it was the first season back in the Championship. But I think that's almost where the sadness is with this team. It's not just that the results have tipped off, which can happen. It's that it's now quite tough to watch. Today was, if we're brutally honest, it was hard, honest, to, watch it was hard it was, to watch. They never looked like scoring, did they? they? they to, to me, I, I've watched this team the last few weeks, and I know Mike Dodds has talked it up you know, moments in the game against Southampton, against Leicester and so on. But I'm watching a team which I think will struggle in League One at the moment. If this, if the this moment. team at the moment was playing in yeah. League One and were fighting for their lives, they would be struggling. You'd wonder where the next win was going to come from. And that leads us into a few questions we've got. Thanks for sending them in. You're all, I'm very pleased that you've sent questions in despite the nil-nil draw, so thank you very much to do that. Um, the first is from my friend Sando, who asks if my catch of the phone in last week's edition suggests I'll be a better fielder in the cricket season this year. 
I suspect not, but I do want a chance in the slip, so be careful, Sando, I'm coming for your position. The first question comes from Josh, who says, will they consider a new manager in the national break? My personal feeling is that they won't now, because I think the only situation in which I think they would have parachuted someone in is if there was a very realistic chance of relegation. I think that even though the performances are very alarming, I think that point in that clean sheet today means that you know they will have enough to get through the end of the season. My view is, yes, if they get the right candidate, they'll bring them in now, because obviously you would have the right time to plan. But the whole thing about why they ended up with Michael Beale for me was because they couldn't get in the middle of the season the candidate they wanted for financial reasons, logistical reasons. That's not going to have changed. So my view is that their hope is that they can get through at the end of the season, even if it's very difficult, and then they can then get one of the candidates who they really, really wanted, either last time out or someone who might become available at the end of the season. So I don't know what you think, but I just think their view will be that they're probably going to stay up now. With a few players back, Dodds can do enough with the group to get through at the end of the season, and then it's going to be a massive reset, isn't yeah, it? It's like, the most important sum summer I can remember. I think quite it's the long summer. The, the, the few, this is a huge summer for the club on a number of levels. And I'd agree fundamentally with what you said there. I, I thought it was interesting, Mike Dodds did say um, ahead of the game that there is a shortlist, and if someone stands out on that shortlist, they might be coming in next yeah. week or the week after. I don't actually see it. I no. think, I, I think, like you, now is not the time. They, you know, they, they're going to take stock now. They're not going to go down. They're not going to go up. The summer is the time to make sure you've made the right appointment. You bring them in, in early enough to, yeah. to enable them to have a good pre-season. And it's key that they are on board with recruitment because I think the last, even Michael Beale in the short time that was here, was starting to murmur about the recruitment mm. of strikers and Tony Mowbray did, and it, it's something that's not going to go away. And I think yeah. whoever they bring in has got to be either completely on board with it, or the club needs to tweak is, it a little is, bit. It tweaks yeah. it and is a bit more flexible in their approach. So that leads us on to the next question, actually, which is from Adam, which I think is kind of relevant to what we're just talking about. Which he says, if Jack Clark goes, and his replacement is somebody who's playing at the moment, he f really fears for what could happen next season. It could be a relegation battle. I think at the moment, obviously we understand that the strategy is to try and bring players in who can develop so that when a player goes, you've already got someone in the building. I think it's a stretch for me to see Bar, Mundo, even Aushish really being in a position to take over from Clark. Yeah. I'm not saying that they're not going to be good players in the future. You know, We were just speaking to Dodds who was praising Aushish, feels he's taken a real step forward in recent weeks. He also mentioned that he's obviously playing during Ramadan, which is obviously a huge challenge and that was something to consider when reflecting on his performance today, which I thought was a good point to raise. Mundell has definitely got something. You can see his crossing ability is actually raw, very, but... very good. But he is raw, and so I do think this summer, that especially when Clark goes, if that lifts the budget because they're able to bring in 16, 20 million, whatever it is, I do think some of that money has got to go on getting a bit more proven quality in the final third. Is it a loan? Is it a key for more? Is it another Ahmad style loan? I think it is absolutely imperative if Clark goes that it isn't just more unproven young players because you can give those players opportunities next season, no problem. But at the moment, the drop off when Clark and Roberts to an extent don't play. It's too severe, isn't it? You can't the, the, the see this group of players I mean, the team is too, for the playoffs it, yeah, without it's Clark. It's been too one-dimensional in the sense it's been over-reliant on Jack yeah. Clark. And I agree with you totally about this recruitment issue. I think that... If, and I, and it, I love it, it and, and, and I like look, it fundamentally. I think it's the only way if you don't it, have a, it, it's a it's huge sort of, It's sort of pure in its sort of ambition, but I don't think purity in this league is something that's sustainable yeah. in, in that sense. What I'd like to see, I and mean, what I, my assumption would be, if you sell Jack Clark and say you get 20 million for him, and possibly you sell one of the other players and you get 15 to 20 million, you've got a 40 million pound war chest, if you like. I would like to see that money reinvested in a better, more experienced player, yeah. because you've got the players you've mentioned coming up behind. But this team clearly needs experience. You in should there be able to do both, well. shouldn't and you? That's should the thing. Be able you, should, to, you should be able to have a It should be able to if be you, tweaked. If you look at that side that went up from League One, you know, Dennis Serkin, Dan Neal, so many players took big steps forward. Anthony Patterson's an mm. obvious one who sometimes you forget how young he is actually, which yeah. is to his credit and brilliant today. But that actually showed that, you know, the core of that team, Bart, Corey Evans, Bailey Wright, there was a balance there, wasn't there? And I do think it's something they're going to get out of this division. They have to go back to that a bit. Uh, you know, there will be some gems either in the Championship or League One who, who would fit the bill of, yeah. of, you know, being that sort of player to replace Clark. My fear is that Sunderland is being is the perception of Sunderland now is they're not big payers, they're doing everything on the, the cheap for want of a better phrase, and that will put 
players off moving to Sunderland. Yeah. They might be for, for a young, ambitious player. They might see, you know, a, a, another club in the Championship or lower Premier League as a better vehicle for their ambitions than than moving to Sunderland in in its current setup and the way that it's currently working. It's, it's with a young players. It's a huge summer for Kirillov Dreyfus, isn't it? Because I think supporters have, for the first time, there've been really bumpy moments where there's been a lot of criticism yeah. within the transfer windows and not signing strikes. Previous. This, for the first time, is the time I get the feel that supporters are actually going. I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about what we're I, doing. I, For the first time, I think people are saying, I'm not sure if this is going to get us to the Premier League. And I think it's a big summer to almost get that belief back, I isn't think it? it? And it, sure it there's, a big, an there's a big question a mark about ambition. And if they're in the third year of a five-year project and it's seemingly like they're going backwards, not upwards, then I think it's it, rightfully the fans are going to question mm. it. Because I think there, there is a feeling now that Kirill has maybe taken his eye off the ball this season on a number of occasions with a number of decisions that have been made which have been poor decisions and I don't think there's any question and I don't think they can walk away from that they, they that dial needs to be reset I mean like you said this summer is the time is, is now that moment to do that but there are some big big questions to be answered and they've got to get it absolutely right 